I'm making an RPG in Minecraft coded with fully custom mechanics. And I know we already have our game's most important feature, but what if we had one more? This. So a flintlock in a fantasy world might seem a little weird, but this is actually the perfect weapon for our game moving forward. Returning viewers might know that we've added a stealth system and an interactable system that helps the player plan their combat before it's even happened. Players are encouraged to be strategic before going into a fight. But how does a pistol actually encourage that? Well, this one sucks. <laughs> in a previous World Building Wednesday, you might have heard that copper is very abundant in our fantasy world in stark contrast to the low amounts of iron and steel. So the player character's copper flintlock made of a much softer metal will explode after a single use. They'll have to be conservative and precise with when and where they use it. But there's even more to it than that. Let's take a look at how it works. Our flintlock will have a mild buildup period where the gun charges up and readies its attack. We'll visually represent that with the hammer being drawn back on the gun itself. Combining that with some incrementally increasing slowness effect, we'll have a nice buildup that conveys to the player that this shot is going to matter. Oh, and the buildup allows the player to cancel the shot at any time, should they realize at the last minute, hey, I don't want to waste my shot right here on this moment. And with that, we're almost there, but don't forget, sound effects and more visuals. We're gonna grab the Ioka sound effect, actually from Rust, a game I've been playing recently. Pretty fun, you should check it out. Uh, Kids, watch out. It's uh, a little rough out there. I don't want to die! I don't want to die! Come on! There's a wolf up there! I'm gonna die! And use it for our build-up effects combined with a generic flint-like sound I found on a free sound website. We have something pretty snazzy. So, if you couldn't immediately tell, I am immensely proud of how this flintlock has turned out. Like, look at the animations, the sounds, the how it's implemented in the gameplay. Oh, just just look, 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 look at the frayed metal and the ash and the the, the dilapidated copper and the blasted frayed ends. Oh, just, uh, let's do it one more time, but let's show off the fact that this gun interacts with all our interactables. Yeah, I know, right? Fancy, crazy. Boom! So this spreads to all the different kinds of interactables. It will, it'll explode the explosive barrels. It'll trigger the beehives. It's gonna be great. But that's not all. You guys know what time it is. Welcome back to another World Building Wednesday. Today we're talking about how to write a story that has branching paths as well as different timings. A good example of this would be in tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons. When your players are free to move around wherever they want, outlining your story can be kind of difficult when they can just stumble on to different things that you might not have expected until much later in the story. The strategy I like to use, as well as several others, is something I like to call tiered information. Basically how it works is we have at the end the different kinds of endings that can occur, and at the start we have all the information that is immediately available. Then from there, you start drawing branches, connecting those uh, initial bits of information to bits of information that would only be discoverable if another thing had already been discovered. A quick example of this is maybe there's been a murder, right? And there are several different clues that can give a lead to find the murderer, right? Maybe the player finds one clue, doesn't find the others. What matters is that they find a clue, and that leads them to the next point in the story. Then you combine this with the fact that the player can do many different kinds of things. Maybe they don't want to investigate the murder right now. Maybe they want to go to a bar. A good way to think about it is information and events. What information is required to trigger an event and what information is required to discover that bit of information. Framing your outline like this helps massively when planning a story that doesn't have a regular linear progression. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. This is where I'll be thanking my patrons and doing a little post-talk. If you want to join the Patreon, there will be a link in the description. There's several different kinds of rewards, but I won't get too much into that. If you're interested, give it a click. 
I know I've said it already, but I really love how this gun mechanic has turned out. I think it feels so satisfying. It's really fun to use strategically and just get in there. Um, I honestly might even throw together a PvP map. Uh, I don't want to get too deep into a new project, especially when we're in the middle of so many others already. Uh, but it's just... It's just so fun to use this gun, I swear. And <laughs> I want more places to use this gun anywhere I can. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. My name has been Devin, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.